Welcome to this new episode of Fact Heist. Today, my dear little junkies, we will talk about the effects of MDMA on your brain. Enjoy! MDMA, aka moly, is a stimulant drug. Yes for real, that is chemically related to amphetamine. As a matter of fact, its really real chemical name is 3,4-methylene dioxymethamphetamine. But for more about amphetamine, check our episode. Link up there. This drug was first developed in 1912 by the German multinational science and technology company, Merck, for those who give a shit. The product was supposed to enhance psychotherapy, because it can help you better experience positive emotions. Oh, everything here is fantastic. Like feeling safe or more in control. Basically, MDMA alters how you process emotions. Ah, oh, these clothes. <laughs> According to my sources, Word on the street is there's an estimated 2 million pills being smuggled in the US of fucking A every day. Every fucking day, that's quite a lot if you ask me. One of the reason for such numbers, is that it has become the popular drug of choice among students and hipsters. For example, it's been reported that a third of student at Stanford University, yes, Stan motherfucking Ford, that one, so a third of its students have tried it for its stimulant properties but mostly for recreational purpose, or primarily for its empathogenic properties should I say. Empathogens, also known as intactogens, are a special kind of psychoactive drugs that promotes empathy and sympathy-related experiences, like relatedness, emotional openness and mass communion, all kind of shit the average primate enjoys to experience with each other. Come on guys, grow up. The prosocial effects of this drug have even been tested on octopuses, on the real, because those animals are notoriously known to be antisocial creatures, look, told ya, and then after MDMA consumption, they started trying to hug and kiss or at least some octopus version of it. MDMA is often consumed in pill form, which is supposed to be composed of, the pure chemical. It can also be snorted, for those who like it row. And unless you are 98 years old like me, you probably know MDMA's other street names like, Molly, Mandy, Ecstasy, or E or X or Ecstasy or whatever. But I really prefer to brag like a massive douche with the really real chemical name, 3,4-methylene-dioxymethamphetamine. No one likes to show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck. Side note, Ecstasy, is supposed to be the term for MDMA, but only once it has been chemically altered with additives like caffeine or even more amphetamines. But for convenience purpose, we will consider it's the same stuff. Thank you for your cooperation. So MDMA can come in Crystal, not some stripper you know, I mean the crystal powder form, gel caps or tablets. The average dose of MDMA in a pill or some shit is 70 to 120 milligrams, once again, supposed to be free of adulterants, but the purity has increased since the 90s. The very era linked with this drug. Because MDMA is often associated with rave parties, electronic dance music, festivals, house parties, clubs you name it. In some rave party setting, the psychedelic amphetamine quality of this drug can indeed offer multiple appealing outcomes, like increased alertness and positive mood. So some users may use it as a party fuel because of MDMA stimulatory effects, while some other users may look for the feeling of mass communion, because of the inhibition reducing effects of the drug. So primitive. And of course, MDMA highly enhances the sensory synergy of music and lighting, I mean all this rave shit. And you can bring it to another level, by taking it in conjunction with other psychoactive substances of your choice. I won't list them, I'm sure you have it all figured out already. And for the big league players, the combination of MDMA and LSD is called candy flipping, because sometimes you have to go big or go home. So don't try this at home kids, I mean, remember that drugs are bad and you should never ever try any of those psychoactive awesomeness. Ever. Ecstasy, which was terrible for you and only ever made me feel fantastic. Kids, don't do it, it's too awesome. Some variable altered sensations like increased energy, pleasure, Empathy and other onsets of subjective effects can start within 30 to 60 minutes after consumption, and then reach the peak phase within 2 hours after consumption. It will then kinda glide on the plateau phase for around 3 to 6 hours. Depending on the user, the recipe, the dose and the environment, the desired psychoactive effects be like. Euphoria, like general well-being and happiness and shit. Inability to sleep. Dilated pupils. Jaw clenching because the drug enhanced the inhibitory mechanisms of noradrenaline which regulate the jaw opening reflex. Some mild hallucinations may occur. 
enhanced perceptions, sensations and or sexuality, but also altered sense of time, serenic effects, that slang for some sense of high inner peace, like antidepressant or anxiolytic effects type of shit, increased emotionality, reduced sense of identity, increased self-confidence, facilitated sociability and communication, therefore those empathogenic effects I told you about, that's the main superpower of MDMA, some kind of unique prosocial stuff, like increased empathy and feelings of openness and closeness with others or some shit. Dance with me! <laughs> But how does this shit work in the first place? When in its pure form, MDMA fucks with the neurotransmitters in the brain. Once again, and for those who still don't know yet, neurotransmitters are combinations of chemicals traveling between neurons, and relaying messages for stuff like controlling emotions, reflexes or memory and so on. In the wild, neurotransmitters like to hang out in their favorite environment, the space between neurons, the synaptic cleft. Actually, when neurons squirt their neurotransmitters, they hit the next neurons for some quick kiss kiss love thing thing before bouncing back and then are destroyed by enzymes, but more often, the neurotransmitters are swallowed back into the releasing neurons, in a process called reuptake. This reuptake thing is possible thanks to transporter proteins, that's some kind of organic vehicles neurotransmitters use to come back inside the first neuron, stopping their action therefore second neurons from firing. In this case, MDMA affects the neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin, is involved in various autonomous maneuvers, like sleep, appetite, learning, memory, but in this very very case, mood. For example, when some really dope shit happens in your life, like falling in love or something, there is an increase in the release of serotonin from neurons, which ultimately stimulates your body and makes you feel some kind of happiness. And when you take an effective amount of MDMA, these serotonergic neurons, yeah that's the lingo penderho, so these neurons, are triggered to release enormous loads of serotonin, along with other neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and of course dopamine, which will trigger even more batshit crazy electrochemical firing in the brain. These effects will generally last around 3 to 8 hours, as the brain cells naturally work their ass off to reuptake the serotonin or have it completely destroyed. But as you probably guessed, this reuptake thing is disrupted as MDMA sticks to these serotonin, dopamine and norepinephrine transporter proteins. Because, inside the synaptic cleft, as MDMA inhibits the function of these transporters, this will fuck up all this reuptake process. And then resulting in massive amounts of remaining serotonin, dopamine and norepinephrine chilling in the synapse for longer, hence mad firing of following neuron, also known as the postsynaptic neuron. Yes, that's how you say it. Meanwhile, inside the first, releasing neuron, also known as the presynaptic neuron. And yes, that's how you say that. Neurotransmitters are packed and travel inside tiny bubbles, called vesicles, and this process is facilitated by some other kind of transporter proteins, vesicular monoamine transporter 2, or VMAT2. But of course, this transporter is unfortunately a molecular target for psychostimulant drugs like methamphetamine and MDMA. As MDMA, with the help of transporter proteins, sneaks its way and builds up inside brain cells, it will ultimately bind to VMAT2 proteins, and then inhibit neurotransmitters proper transport. This VMAT2 inhibition and disruption of storage will result in mucho mucho free serotonin swimming inside serotonergic neurons. Then this serotonin can even be more easily released with its namesake transporters, which have been kinda hacked and reversed by MDMA. And that's the main difference between MDMA and other amphetamines, MDMA inhibits the serotonin transporter way more potentially than the dopamine or norepinephrine transporter. Some, but not all, studies have found that MDMA facilitates the release of the quote mark bonding hormone, oxytocin, which can be linked to its unique prosocial effects. Definitely do not try this drug. There's also like a 90% chance you'll hook up, but really, no, don't do it. Even if you don't hook up, you don't care. But you'll hook up, guaranteed. But unfortunately, there are also many many downsides to MDMA. First of all, as MDMA releases that many serotonin, your body destroys way much more serotonin than usual, and gets used to do it, it becomes the new normal. So when your brain is back to its normal state, I mean after MDMA consumption, less serotonin is available, and for a shorter duration. Therefore this shortage of serotonin can't provide enough for neuroreceptors, and you feel less happy with normal life events. Something kinda similar to a severe hangover can happen too, 
with delicious side effects like hints of depressive feelings here and there, negative mood, tiredness or irritability. And I think that's it for the adverse effects of MDMA. Not. There are of course this many nasty other side effects. First, on the short term, MDMA can cause sweating, rapid heartbeat, blurred vision, an urgent need to wear neon clothing, grinding and clenching of the teeth, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, insomnia, increased blood pressure and obviously increased psychomotor activity. Some people can sometimes report auditory or visual hallucinations, but should we believe reports from hallucinating people? But the most serious short-term side effect of MDMA being hyperthermia and dehydration. On e, that's what we fuck, man. Then comes the mid-term side effects, that can sometimes occur and persist up to a week after cessation of moderate MDMA use. First, the physiological type, shit like more insomnia, more loss of appetite, tiredness or lethargy and trismus, aka the involuntary contraction of the jaw, and on the psychological type. The mid-term side effects of MDMA can include impulsiveness, more irritability, depression, which is no joke, memory impairments, anxiety, paranoia, restlessness, and anhedonia, that's the deficit or total incapacity to feel any joy or pleasure. Anhedonia, hedonism, the pursuit of pleasure, anhedonia, the inability to feel pleasure, that is what a depression is about. Some of this depressive state thing is caused by serotonin depletion, and can not only last from the subsequent days following MDMA use, but can also persist for longer periods. This depression thing is the main reason people quit using MDMA. For regular users, longer term side effects and impairment can even occur in multiple aspects of cognition, like memory, attention, impulsivity of course, learning, but also sleep and visual processing. MDMA probably causes this 5G brain control thing because MDMA is manufactured by pedophile lizard people or some shit. Because that's what I saw on Facebook. Then it must be true. For heavy users, I mean those who use more than 7 times the average, those repeated sessions of elevated brain temperature from MDMA use can increase the permeability of the blood-brain barrier, the rampart of cells between neurons and blood flow, thereby, making the brain more reachable for environmental toxins or pathogens. And most studies show indeed a positive correlation between this elevation in brain temperature and neurotoxicity. As a matter of fact, long-term exposure to MDMA can result in neurotoxic damages in serotonergic axon terminals, this neuron's tail thing thing. These neurodegenerations can happen in many brain areas, like, reduction in volume of the hippocampus, that's the memory factory of the brain, but also the striatum, which is involved in movement, motivation and reward. My eyes! Not again! Ow! 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 As well as the occipital and prefrontal cortices, so vision and executive functions can end up altered. And those neurotoxic damages to serotonergic axon terminals may persist for years. On the real. But, and depending on the person, unwanted neuroplastic changes can happen in white matter. Sometimes even reduction in gray matter density of the orbitofrontal cortex has been reported in some MDMA users. Along with changes in the brain's microvasculature, that's the small blood vessels and shit. Moreover, on some rainy Tuesday afternoon, some study found that, according to the almighty DSM-5, approximately 15% of regular MDMA users meet the diagnostic criteria for substance dependence. There's five dollars, buy yourself a suit and get busy. Uh, I'll buy a suit of drugs! <laughs> but most of the time, the magnitude of these cognitive impairments is linked with lifetime MDMA users, and are, for some of them, partially reversible with substance abstinence. However, once in a while, some deaths can be reported. Because of the increase in body temperature and overheating in this dehydration thang there's then no more sketchy European white trash rave parties. Side note. I used to live for decades in what happened to be kinda ground zero for those crusty gutter junkie punks, we called them people punk with dogs. Because they often come with kinda sketchy stray dogs, they often like to migrate in smutty pickup trucks known as cam tar, along with forest green or camo outfits, filthy hair, I mean like white rasta hair, poor hygiene of course and, for some reason, expensive puffy skate shoes. Regarde moi ça, espèce de hippie de merde, petit blanc, sale bourge. Tu ferais mieux de sortir directement avec ton chien, mais regarde-moi la tête de cette fille Sac à merde, va Trick Rentre chez toi Même ton chien, il est con But nonetheless, despite all these nasty negative side effects, MDMA has been highly studied for more than 20 years, on the real, and considered for potential therapeutic benefits. 
especially for post-traumatic stress disorder, for which there's a decrease in communication between the hippocampus and the amygdala. As MDMA reduces the fear response in the amygdala, it can help people with PTSD being less afraid or emotionally overwhelmed by past traumas, as it helps you better differentiate between the then and the now. Some other study found, links in the description below, that MDMA can basically cure two-third of treatment-resistant people suffering from PTSD. The participants of this seemingly super dope study, who were afflicted with the condition for an average of 14 years, no longer met the criteria for post-traumatic disorder. And then afterward, fMRI analysis pointed that there was an increase in communication between the hippocampus and the amygdala, which is kinda awesome, given that PTSD responds better when it's super fresh. Furthermore, their depressive symptoms improved as well. This shit can be as efficient against PTSD, as mushrooms are as antidepressants. Drugs can do almost anything once you realize they're super good for you. Therefore, MDMA is the psychedelic that's the closest to get the FDA seal of approval for treatment for PTSD in psychiatry. MDMA can also be helpful for people with chronic or even childhood traumas, as they can develop a state of mind of self-blame and self-loathing. Because MDMA promotes self-compassion, acceptance and empathy for yourself, it can also expand the awareness of personal assets. However, such treatments remain highly controversial, because remember that even small amounts of MDMA can not only destroy action terminals of neurons involved in serotonin release, but it can as well potentially cause brain damage and shit, so don't forget that more research is needed. And that's it for this episode of Fact Heist. Thanks for coming! We hope that you've enjoyed it. I... I... Wow, that just fucked my head. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Peace. The following segment is a depiction of what could happen if you take MDMA. So be sure to always keep in mind this advice from OJ Simpson. Don't do drugs. If you're doing it, stop it.